Hello, friends. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish the review. So in the first video, we stopped at number 25. So today we're going to um, continue with number 26. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and write this. This is the start of chapter 12. And so we're now getting into those vector valued functions. So let me write this in its component form. Again, this is just my particular preference um, on how I like to write it. Okay, let me fix this um, focusing here because I don't like it to keep adjusting every time I stick my hand in the camera. Okay, much better. Now, um, so what we're gonna do here is Notice that it says minus t minus four in parentheses over here. And so when I wrote it in component form, I did go ahead and distribute that negative, which is how I ended up with negative t and a positive four, okay? So I did go ahead and take care of that already when I put it in its um, component form, okay? And the component form is just my preference. Some people still work with it in the i, j, and k. It is completely okay to do it that way. If you view the solutions, a lot of times the solutions will have it worked out in uh, with uh, using i and j and k. So I just don't like the standard unit vector form. It's it's okay. I mean, it's not really anything that crazy about it. You're literally just like combining like terms, right? I's with i's, j's with j's, k's with k's. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, it's just not my particular preference. Okay. Um, if you're on the test and you're choosing to use the IJK notation, it is perfectly fine as long as you're doing it correctly, it's not an issue. Um, but what we're going to do here is just, I guess we're just going to plug in values for um, T. So the first value that they want me to plug in for T is 4. And so I'm just going to plug in 4. Um, and so then I end up with 16 divided by 2, which is 8, and the negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And so I do end up with these um, numbers here. I don't know what this is. I thought maybe it was something I could erase, but it's not. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, it might be my lotion that I just put on. Okay, anyway, we'll go on to part B. Now we're going to take R of 0. So this time we're gonna plug in zero. So when I plug in zero here and I multiply this zero times one half, I'm gonna get zero. When I plug in zero here for T, zero plus four is just four. Now for part C, they want me to plug in S plus four. So it's a little more complicated looking, but essentially we're just replacing the T with S plus four. And so then when I compute this, this is one half S squared plus eight S plus 16. And this is negative S minus four plus four. And so we end up with um, one half S squared plus four S plus eight, and then just negative S because the negative four and the four will cancel. So that is what we get for part C. And then for part D, we're plugging in two plus delta t, and then we're subtracting what we would get if we plugged in just the delta t. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not the delta t, just the two. I knew it was one of those numbers only by themselves, but not the delta t. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna have one half two plus delta t squared and then negative two plus delta t plus four, take away, we're gonna plug in two. So two squared gives me four, one half of four is two, and then minus two plus four is gonna be a positive two. So that's what I'm going to subtract. Uh, looks like you can't see that. There we go, now we got it. Um, make that a tiny bit bigger, here we go. Okay, so then let's go ahead and simplify this. That's going to be one half times four plus four delta t plus delta t squared 
comma negative two minus delta t when I distribute this negative plus four minus two comma two. So then I have um, one half of four is two, two delta t, and then one half of delta t squared. And then negative two and four is just negative delta t plus two. So if I'm taking this expression and subtracting two, that's gonna cancel this. And then if I take this expression and I subtract two, it's going to cancel that two. So I end up with two delta t plus one half delta t squared. And then the second term is just negative delta t. Oh, and I apologize again, you cannot see the very, very bottom of that. There we go. I feel like the last time I had better, um, a better capture of my paper. Okay, there we go. That's all of 26. So let me go ahead and type all of that into the computer. So here we got eight comma zero. And for zero, we got um, zero four. For this one, we got, oh gosh, we got this big ugly thing. So operations, we have a fraction, one over two. And then we have S squared, get down from there, plus four S, plus eight, I'm typing in this expression, comma negative s, okay? Then down here, we're going to type in what we just got for our last part, which is two Greek symbols. There's a delta in here somewhere. Oh no, I think it says we have to if you need to use delta t, enter delta t. So I'm going to type delta t. Oh yeah, I changed it to the little symbol. And then plus operations fraction um, one over two, go to the side. Parentheses delta t, close the parentheses square. Get down with the comma. Then negative. Delta T. Okay, that looks like exactly what I have on the paper down here at the bottom. So we shall submit and see if we get this right. Moment of truth. Yay, all checks. Okay, so move on to number 27. So in number 27, they do give us a vector valued function. And t0 equal to zero. And I cannot express enough importance here on how important it is right now to be putting these bars over anything that is a function. Because as you get further and further into the content, you'll need to be able to distinguish between which functions are vector functions and which functions are scalar functions, um, because it will get confusing when we start doing some theorems with this stuff later, okay? Um, so I highly, highly recommend that you um, get used to putting those little things when you're writing down on your paper. In the computer, you can always bold print it, but on paper, you have to put that little symbol. So the first thing they want is just R prime of T general so I'm going to take the derivative of e to the t, which is e to the t. The derivative of e to the 2t is e to the 2t, but times the chain rule. Here, if I multiply by the chain rule, the derivative of t is just 1. So it essentially just stays the same value, e to the t, right? That's the final derivative there. Um, however, when it comes to, I don't know where my eraser went. Um, Okay, I'll just grab another one. Um, but 
here when we're doing the chain rule, the derivative of 2t is 2. So in that case, we get 2e to the 2t. Now, normally people don't write this stuff, they just write that, but I wrote it just because um, that's okay. It's never a bad thing to have too many steps unless you're wasting time writing all that stuff. And it's just a bunch, so this is a thing. Okay, next part, ask us to plug in the T value that they gave us. Oh no, not into the prime. So the second part does not have the prime there. And if you didn't hear me say this in a past video, this is like the best eraser ever. Um, just in my opinion, I'm using some really weird paper right now. So it's not doing, <laughs> it's not proving <laughs> to be the best right now in this paper. But um, this paper is actually meant, it's got a certain chemical inside of it um, because it's meant to record. So everything that I write down, it makes a video of that, of those motions. And so you could watch a video with me. And if I wanted to talk while I was doing it, I would, you would be able to like record, pause, stop, do all these things, jump to certain parts, play back, change the volume. Um, this paper is a special paper. It's kind of obsolete though, because the pen that I would use to record everything, um, it's got this special ink too. And uh, that's what allows it to like record. And these little, little pin tips, they only last for so long and they're super expensive. So I just stopped <laughs> using it. And now I have all these binders. So I just decided to start using the binders as regular paper because I might as well get some use out of them since they were purchased for me by the department. So let's go ahead and plug in T naught, which in this case is zero. And so I'm gonna plug it into the original because there's no prime in the second part, right? If I pay attention right here to this that they're asking me, there's no prime over there. So I should not be using um, a prime, okay? Now, if I take this, um, let's plug in into the original. So we got e to the zero and in e to the two times zero. In both cases, it becomes e to the zero, which is just one. And then now I'm going to do our prime of t0, which is our prime of 0. And now I'm plugging it into the second derivative. Or I'm sorry, plugging it into the derivative. So although this is still 1 and this is still 1, that 1 has to get multiplied by this 2, which is going to make the second component a 2. OK, now. I think that's it. So we should just put these in here for now. And then we'll talk about the graph in just a second. So we have e raised to the t and then 2e raised to the 2t. And then here we had 1 comma 1. And for this part, we had 1 comma 2. So now let's look at the graphs. So for the graph, you want to draw um, the curve. And I don't know which of these curves is mine. I may not need to draw the whole thing um, as long as I can pinpoint where this point is. So I know that when I plug in 0 into the vector, I'm going to get 1, 1. OK, so I definitely need to have a graph that has the point 1, 1. So it's got to be um, this graph or this graph. It cannot be these two down here because they don't have the point one one. Okay. Um, then I also need to have the point one. Um, no, I'm sorry. That's something different. So this R is correct on both of the two top functions. I just don't know whether my graph is going to look like this or whether it's going to look like that. Now, from my experience with exponentials, exponentials do have this shape as the first one. And it's logarithms that have the shape as the second one. Okay, so I know from experience just what logarithms look like. I know that it's the first option, but if you're not sure, you can always plug in a second R, a second value into R, like maybe um, one, and see if you get the same thing. Okay, so if I were to plug in one into R, I would get e to the one and then e to the two times one. 
So essentially I'd get E and then E squared. And what is that? I Let's go look. So E by itself is about 2.7 and then E squared is about 7.4. So which of these two graphs have that point? Well, here's 2.7, but it looks like that Y value is between one and two. So it's definitely not the image on the right, okay? But if you look here too, it does go all the way up there somewhere and which makes sense that it would be the seven, okay? So this is just an extra point to make sure that I pick the correct graph, okay? Or if you know what, a, what exponentials look like, you probably can figure out which graph it's gonna look like. Um, and then now it says, what is the relationship between R prime and the curve? Now remember that R prime is going to be tangent to that curve, okay? That's the definition of derivatives, right? When you take derivatives, you do get um, lines, or in this case, vectors that are um, tangent to the curve at that specific point. It's not perpendicular. Well, no, it's not necessarily perpendicular. Let's submit our answer and see what it says. Yep, good, good, good. So we'll move on to number 28. We do need to get to 42, right? So hopefully it doesn't take us that long to get there. Um, I'm gonna try to go through these pretty quick but still explain them a little bit as I go along. So we've got cosine of t and then nine sine of t. And so what it's asking me for is r prime. So this is just a constant multiplier and the derivative of cosine is negative sine and the chain rule of the derivative of t is just one. Here, same thing, nine is a multiplier. So then I have nine times the derivative of sine, which is cosine t, and then the chain rule will say I'll multiply by the derivative of t, which is just one. So in essence, we end up with negative seven sine t and nine cosine t. Now you don't need to show this. If you know how to do all that in your head, it's perfectly okay just to jump to here. I'm just talking how they got there, okay? Um, now that's it, that's all they wanted. So that's pretty easy. So we have negative seven cosine um, t and then comma nine. Oh, I put the wrong one, I put cosine, it should have been sine. This one, one, two, three, S-I-N. There we go. Okay, so number 29 says R of T. Equals T squared plus 2T. And then T squared minus 2T. And so the first thing they want is R prime, which would be 2T plus 2 and 2T minus 2 then they want our double prime. So our double prime would be two and two. And then they want the last part is our prime dot product with our double prime. So we're gonna do two T plus two, two T minus two dot product with two and two. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking two T plus two times two and then adding two T minus two times two. So it's a right-handed distribution. So I get four T plus four, and then here I get four T minus four. So these fours are gonna get canceled and then we're gonna have eight T. Oops. So you can look at my screen while I type this stuff in here. 
So 2t plus 2 power 2t two minus 2. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'll check. Now move on to 30. We get R. Of T equal to T, 4T, and T squared. And then u of t is equal to 5t, t squared, t cubed. And so if we do a, which is our prime of t, we get um, 1, 4, and 2t. Now, they didn't ask me for u prime, but I can see that I am going to have to take the derivative of u at some point. Um, and then here and here again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do u prime over here on the side, even though they didn't ask me for that, okay? So the derivative of this is five, two t, and then three t squared. So for part B, it asked me for um, d dt of three, r of t minus u of t. And so I'm going to use my derivative properties to break this down. 3 is the constant multiplier. And then the derivative of r of t is r prime of t. And then with the difference rule, just doing the derivative of the first term times the derivative of the second term, which would be u prime of t. So it literally means 3 times the r prime vector minus the u prime vector. And it looks like you cannot see all of the paper. There we go, much better. So then I'm just gonna simplify that. That's going to be three minus five, 12 minus two t, and six t minus three t squared. I think I can only simplify the first two terms and that's it. So part C says to do d dt of 2t times u of t. So this does have something with t and then something else with t in it. So I do have to use the product rule. So we get the first um, factor times the derivative of the second factor plus um, the derivative of the second factor, which is just two times the, sec the second factor, original, right? So we end up with two t times u prime plus um, two times just u, regular u, five t, t squared, t cubed. I'm trying to squeeze it in there. So let's split it up, we're gonna distribute the 2t and distribute the two. So we get um, 10t, 4t squared, and 6t cubed, plus 10t, 2t squared, and 2t cubed, which does give us 20t, 6t squared, and 8t cubed. Now for part D. We have um, d dt of r of t dot product u of t. So there's a different kind of multiplication. This is scalar multiplication and this is a dot product, but nonetheless, it's still a form of multiplication, right? So we're still going to um, use the product rule. So we're gonna get the first function dot product, the same kind of multiplication. See here, this was scalar multiplication. So I had scalar multiplication in between these. 
I don't write a dot. I could have just put a two parentheses and two. Um, but this is now a dot product. And then the derivative of the second function plus the derivative of the first function, same product times the original second function. Okay. So then here I get, um, and there's a lot of parts here. I'm gonna have to write this out. So I'm gonna get R. with dot product of u prime plus r prime dot product with u, the original u. So I am writing down the wrong, I'm writing down u prime. Original u is up there. And so then I get um, 5t plus 8t squared plus 3t to the fourth. And for this dot product, I get 5t plus 4t squared plus 2t to the fourth, which means I get 10t plus 12t squared plus 5t to the fourth. And then I'm gonna to have to flip the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in these answers here. So for U prime, I got one comma four comma two T. For part B, we got, what do we get for the end? We got negative two comma 12 minus two T. Oops, two comma. 6t, take away 3t squared. Just want to make sure that's correct. Okay, that's what I have. So I don't know if it's correct, but I want to make sure it matches my paper. So for part C, we ended up with 20t comma 6t squared comma 8t cubed. Now for part D, we ended up with 10t plus 12t squared plus 5t to the fourth. Okay, now I'm going to work on the next one, but on the next page. This is still number 30, but just part E. So we're going to be doing the derivative of r of t cross with u of t. So instead of scalar multiplication or dot product, now we're doing the cross product. But again, still a multiplication. So we're still going to apply that product rule. So we get the first vector, same kind of product, derivative of the second vector, plus the derivative of the first vector times, same kind of times, um, the original second vector. So you're basically taking the derivative of one of them, and then on the other term, you're taking the derivative of the other one. So here I took the derivative of u, and here I'm taking the derivative of r. And notice that the other ones are the originals, okay? And it really doesn't matter whether if you do um, r prime and u, and then u prime r. But what does matter is that this function is in the front on both of them and that this function is in the back on both of them. You cannot switch that order, okay? Um, it might not make a big difference with the scalar product and it certainly won't make a difference as well with the dot product. But when it comes to the cross product, if you put these in the wrong order, you will get the wrong answer, okay? So you do have to keep r in the front and u in the back. You just need to put the prime on one of them in one term and the prime on the other one in the other term. And that part doesn't matter. I could write this term first and then the other, okay? So let's go ahead and actually figure out what those are gonna look like. I'm gonna put them in, matrix, in matrices first, and then we'll actually do the computations and make them look like component form vectors. So R was um, T, 4t and t squared, and then u prime was 5, 2t, 3t squared. 
Then I'm going to put my plus sign. I'm going to put another vector. And then r prime was 1, 4, and 2t. And then u was 5t, t squared, and t cubed. Okay. And so now I'm going to actually do the cross product of all of these. So for the first one, I get 12t cubed take away 2t cubed. Then I get negative 3t cubed plus 5t squared. Again, this is just um, the opposite upper signs as the first one, because the second one always needs to be the opposite. Then 2t squared minus 20t. Plus, now let's do the same over here. So we get 4t cubed minus 2t cubed. Then we get negative t cubed plus 10t squared. And then we get t squared minus 20t. So let's combine those. Um, these are all t cubes. So we have 12 take away 2, which is 10 plus 4 is 14, take away 2 is 12. Then here we just have the cubes and then the squares. So I get negative 4t cubed plus 15t squared. And I have 2t squared plus t squared, which is 3t squared. And then um, negative 20 and negative 20 is a negative 40t. That's a long one. I'll wait to type that in in the end. Now, finally, F is R of 4T. Now, this one you really can't do. I mean, you could do a product rule, um, not a product rule, but a chain rule, where you do R prime times the derivative of um, whatever's inside here. But um, I like to do it just the old school. I like to figure out what R of 4T looks like first. And then I will go. So um, I always say this is just r prime of 4 over t. So I definitely need to figure out what 4 over t looks like. So I don't write this. I leave it like that in the box. And instead of trying to rewrite it, I just do d dt of what? If I plug 4t in for r, I'm going to get 4t. And then four times four t and then four t squared, right? So that's four t, 16 t and 16 t squared. And then if I take the derivative of that, I get four, 16 and 32 t, okay? Now, if you notice that is the same as if I were to have written the chain rule. Chain rule says you're gonna have r prime of t times four, okay? And so let's see if that's true because r prime, and this is not a dot product, it's a scalar multiplication, okay? So basically you're gonna have four times r prime, whatever r prime was, and it looks like r prime was one, four, and two t. See, that's not necessarily true because I got, well, I should have been 16. Yeah, I don't know why I changed it to 32. That was weird. Oh, because I did the derivative. So that's not true. It doesn't work like that. Because notice I will get the four and I'll get the 16, but I'm not getting this guy. This guy is not correct. So don't try to do that with the chain rule. I would just highly suggest you figure out what R of 4T is first and then do the derivative. Because I promise you this one's gonna be the correct one, not the other one. So let's go ahead and try those, plug them in. So let me plug in F. It's a lot to plug in here, so bear with me. I gotta get it all in. Just like you would when you're trying to do the assignment, you're going to take a second, right, to take all this stuff in. Come on. And then 3t squared 
minus 40, oops, 140 p. Then here we go. We have 4, comma, 16, comma, 30, oops, 32. Let's check it and see if it's correct. Yes, see, and if we would have done it the chain rule, we would have gotten this last term incorrect. Oh, I don't know why I submitted that again. Okay, 31. We're making headway, we're making headway. Um, come on. There we go. So 31 has the integral of 4t cubed, 12t, and negative 4. The square root of t can be written as t to the 1 half, and then dt. So we're essentially going to take the integral of each term. So I get 4t to the 4th over 4, which means those are going to cancel. 12t squared over 2. This is going to reduce to 6. And then negative 4 times t to the 3 halves um, divided by 3 halves or multiplied by the reciprocal, 2 thirds. Um, and then plus c. And I did take the integral, so I should not be writing this s symbol at all. An equal sign. So we do get t to the fourth, 6t squared. And then here I'm going to have negative 8 thirds t to the 3 halves. And then this plus vector c. I am so sorry that you couldn't see that. OK. So we took the integral of the first term, took the integral of the second term, took the integral of the last term and then just simplified each expression for each component. And I do need to enter in the bold C. Notice how it says use the bold C for the constant of integration. So we definitely need to do that. So not a double, just T to the fourth comma, six T squared comma, negative eight over three T to the three over two. And then I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna hit plus and I need a bold a C. And it does have a bold C. So let's see if that's correct. I did not submit it yet. Yay, okay, now this one has the cube root of t. And so the cube root of t is actually written as t to the one third and then dt. So if I integrate individually, I'm gonna have four t squared over two, nine t to the fourth over four, and then t to the four thirds divided by four thirds or multiplied by three fourths. And then instead of a plus C, I do have bounds. So I will have to plug those bounds in for T. So I get two T squared, nine over four T to the fourth, and then three fourths T to the four thirds. And I'm still gonna plug in the one and negative one. So I get, when I plug in one, I get two, nine fourths and three fourths. When I plug in negative one, when I square it, I'm gonna get positive two. When I raise it to the fourth power, I'm gonna get positive nine fourths. And when I raise this to the fourth power, I'm also gonna get a positive three fourths. And if I'm subtracting everybody from themselves, I am going to get the zero vector, okay? And so instead of typing in zero, 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 I am gonna to try to type in the bold zero, but I don't think that this one's gonna take that answer. So I'm just gonna verify first but this does equal to zero vector, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't like it. So 
Let's go back and type in the 000. I think this happened when we were doing the review. I mean, the assignment that had this in there, 12.2. Um, it also did not accept the zero, bold zero. Okay, so now it, take it, it took it. So it does have to be this version, not this one. It doesn't like that one. Okay, number 33. So I'm gonna switch my page over so I can work on number 33. Number 33. Okay. Speed, speed. <laughs> it is early in the morning, so I apologize if I'm yawning. It is not because this is boring, because I actually like math, but just because I probably need some coffee. Um, I know that's not good for my health, but I do like to drink coffee every morning if and when I can. Okay, it does give me a point here on the side and it is seven two. So the directions say to find the velocity vector V, the speed S and acceleration vector A of the object. Um, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. so V is actually our prime, right? So then I'm just going to take the derivative there. It's going to be seven times E to the negative T times the derivative of that, which is negative one, two E to the T times the derivative of that, which is one. So I get negative seven E to the negative T and two E to the T. Um, then it wants me to give them S and S is a scalar because it is actually the magnitude of V. So I'm going to calculate that. I will have negative seven E to the negative T squared plus two E to the T squared, which is 49 E to the negative two T and 4e to the 2t. Now they do have something in common. I can factor out some e's. If I factor out the lower exponent, that would be this one. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to get 49 by itself plus 4e to the 4t. Because when I add these exponents, I will get 2t. And then this can come out. So it just comes out as e to the 1, negative 1t and then 49 plus 4e to the 4t. That's as much as I can simplify it. I think you could probably make it a fraction if you really wanted to. But other than that, it's pretty much simplified as much as it can be. It'll become positive once it goes downstairs, right? So a of t though is a little bit different. a of t is a vector and it is the derivative of the velocity vector. So I do have the velocity vector there. So there's my constant multiplier and then the chain rule, and then two e to the t and the chain rule. So it actually turns out to be positive seven e to the negative t and two e to the t. Um, and so that's what we've got there. Now for the other part, for part b, it asked me to find v of zero so V is up here, and if I plug in zero, this becomes a one times negative seven, and this becomes a one times two. Now, if I plug a zero into A, um, oh, it's a positive seven here for A. So I have a one times seven, which is seven and a one times two, which is two. And so how do I know which curve it is? They all look like they have the same points. So I just need to figure out where A and where V go, okay? Now, since my V is going from negative seven or starts, it's going from, it has to start from the point, wherever the point was, seven, two. 
So all these graphs should have the 0 0.72 and they all look like they do. But from 72, I need to move according to these units. So I would need to go down seven uh, units and then go over to the right two units. So if we're looking here at 72, I should be going um, down seven units and then to the right two. So it actually should have a vector going this direction, but I don't see any of them doing that. Is that correct? It does look like it's correct. Hmm. Oh yeah, it went not down. I don't, that's my fault, my bad. The first component tells you left or right. So it should be going left seven units, left seven units, and then up two. That makes sense, okay? The Y value here is already a two, so I went left seven and then up. So these are my V vectors. So it's either the top two. The bottom two has it labeled as A, okay? That's my mistake. Then also from that point seven two, right? You should have the acceleration vector coming off of that one. Now that one's going to the right seven units and then up two. So you have this point here and it's gonna go to the right seven units and then up two. And so these make sense for um, the A. The only thing I have an issue with is that I don't know which direction the function's moving in. Is it going this way to the left or is it going like over here on the other graph to the right, okay? In order for me to do that, I am gonna have to plug in two values into R. So the first one I'm gonna plug in is zero and then I'm also gonna plug in one. So R of zero is gonna be seven E to the negative zero 2e to the 0, which is going to be 7 and 2, which is the point they gave us, right? And then r of 1 is 7e to the negative 1, 2e to the 1. And so let's plug those in and see what we get. It's about 7e to the negative 1, which is about 2.6 and then 2e to the positive one is about 5.4. So this was the first point, and then from there it went here. So it went um, 2.6 to 5.4 up here somewhere, okay? So it went from this point, 7.2, to that other point, which means it is going in this direction. It's going upward. Um, so we're gonna submit our answer. Um, oh, I didn't even check all my stuff. So let's do this. Oops, I did not mean to push these buttons. It's trying to get to the vector button. Negative seven e to the negative t, comma, two e to the t. And then here I had a fraction and I had um, the square root. Square root of 49, plus 4 e to the 4 t. At the bottom, we have e to the t. Then over here for acceleration, we have a vector. And we have 7 e to the negative t. And we have 2 e to the t. Oops, I put 2 instead of t. And then for V of zero, we have negative seven comma two. And for A, it's a vector seven comma two. And we already picked the graph and it looks like my graph was correct. So let's just make sure all of our other entries are correct. Hmm. 
Oh, I put a double a double um thing in here. There we go. Now that should be good. Yeah, that was good. I just accidentally pressed the square root twice. Okay, number 34, making our way, making our way. We have a of t, which is four. There is no j component, so I have zero, and then nine for k. And then v of zero equals zero for i, three for j, and zero for k. And then r of zero equals a zero vector, which is zero, zero, zero. Okay. So we're going to find V then R. So V is actually the integral of A with respect to T. So if we integrate four, zero and nine, we're gonna get four T zero and nine T plus some constant. But if I plug in zero into T, supposedly I'm gonna get um, this. So let's see what we get when we plug in zero here. We're going to get zero, zero, zero plus C, but supposedly that's going to equal this, which means that C is going to be zero, three, zero, minus zero, 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 um, which means C is just zero, three, zero. So what does that mean for a vector though? It means that um, we're going to have 4t plus 0, 0 plus 3, and then 9t plus 0. And so that's the total um, vector. So let me come over here. Oh, there we go. So we know that when we plug in 0, when we plug in 0 here and here, we're going to get two zeros. This one's already 0. And then we have that plus C. But we know that that is supposed to apparently equal this. So I'd set it equal to that. Then I went ahead and solved for C. So I subtracted this vector over. But when you do all of those subtractions, you just end up with 0, 3, 0, which means that V of T should be this vector plus that vector. So 4T plus 0 is 4T. 0 plus 3 is 3. And then 9T plus 0 is 9T. Now let's go ahead and find R because R can be found by taking the integral of V. So we're gonna integrate 4T, three and 9T. So we get um, 4T squared over two, three T and nine T squared over two plus some constant, right? A vector constant. But according to that thing, r of zero, this would just be two. Oh, but when I plug in zero, I'm just gonna get zero. When I plug in zero there, I'm gonna get zero. And when I plug in zero here, I'm gonna get zero. But supposedly this, r, when you plug in um, zero for r, it's supposed to come out to zero, zero, zero. So this essentially tells me that the constant there is just zero, 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 which also tells us that R of T is going to be um, these components plus these components, which is essentially just those. But let me reduce that first term. And then nine halves, I cannot really reduce. So I'm gonna leave it like that, okay? Then they want you to find R of eight. So eight squared is 64, two times 64 is going to be 264. Three times eight is 24. 64 times nine over two is apparently 288. So well, let's go vectors. And for the first one for V, we have 4T comma three comma nine T. Oh, I hit T instead of comma. Then for R we have 
two t squared comma three t comma nine over two t squared. And then when I plug in eight, I get two six four comma two four so that's two eight eight. So let's check. Oh, I got the wrong, bottom one wrong. Let me see. There, two parentheses, eight squared. Oh, 120. Why do I have 264? I must have hit it there twice. And then eight times that is that. Okay, and then nine halves times eight squared, which is 64. So I think it might just be that first number that I had in there wrong. Yeah, it was just that one value. Okay, number 35. Got about seven or eight more problems left, eight actually. 35 being the eighth one. So we got R of T equal to T cubed, five T squared, and that's it. So we're gonna close that up and then T equals one. So they wanna find the tangent unit vector specified at one. So we know that the tangent um, vector is basically R prime over the magnitude of R prime. So R prime is three T squared, 10 T. So then the magnitude would be nine T to the fourth plus a hundred T squared. And if I wanna simplify that, I can factor out a T squared And I get 9t squared plus 100. Um, and then the square root of t squared is t. And the square root of this, I do not know. So let's leave it alone. But I can divide each of these by t. So 3t and 10. And then the square root of 9t squared plus 100. So this is the general t. But since they want to know what t of 1 is, we're just going to plug in 1. Everywhere we see a t. So, oops, I don't know why I put that as 3. It should be a 9 down here. So we end up with 3, 10 over the square root of 9 plus 100 is 109. I do not think that the square root of 109 reduces. It does not. So I essentially end up with three over the square root of 109 and 10 over the square root of 109. So let's go ahead and write that in there. Vectors, dun, 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 operations, fraction. Oh, I didn't mean to hit it twice. Three over the square root of 109, comma, fraction, 10 over the square root of 109. So let's double check. Yes. Okay. Number 36. It says R of T equals one and then six, not one, T and then six t to the negative one, since it's downstairs. And then it says t equals two. So they want n of two. Well, n, just general n, is um, t prime over the magnitude of t prime. So t prime over the magnitude of t prime. So we definitely have to find t first. So let's go ahead and find t. 
by finding r prime over the magnitude of r prime. So that is one and then negative six t to the negative two over the magnitude, which is one plus 36 t to the negative four. Um, which in the um, denominator, I'm going to factor out t to the negative 4. When I do that, I need to get t to the 4. So that this times this will add the exponents, which give you 0. And t to the 0 is 1. And then plus just 36. So then the square root of that is going to be t to the negative 2. And I get t to the 4 plus 36 still inside the radical. I guess you don't need the parentheses. Um, but then I'm going to have each of these over this. So I'm going to have 1 over t to the negative 2. And then here, those are going to cancel. So I'm going to have negative 6 over the square root of t plus 4, 36, which can be written as just t squared negative 6 over the square root of t to the fourth plus 36, okay? Now, that's t, okay? I still need to do t prime and then its magnitude. So now we're going to get into t prime, okay? Now, remember, this is a scalar, like essentially you have one over the square root times this vector, okay? So we're going to use that product rule. So we're going to have the first, and instead of writing it as a fraction, I'm just going to write it as whatever's in here, t to the fourth plus 36 to the negative one half, okay? So I'm going to have the first function, scalar multiplication times the derivative of the second function, which is a vector value function, plus um, this scalar function, or I'm sorry, the derivative of that scalar function now. So bring down the negative one half, and then you're going to have t to the fourth plus 36. Take away one means it's going to be negative three halves, and then do the derivative of what's inside. It's going to be 4t cubed, and then times the regular scalar multiplication times the original, ve the original vector function. Okay, so let's simplify this. Um, actually, before I keep simplifying, I'm gonna do like two steps in one. I do see they have this in common, but I need to go with the smaller exponent. So I'm going to factor out the smaller exponent. So when I do that, I'm gonna get t to the fourth plus 36 to one power. Negative three halves plus one is negative one half. Here, I'm gonna reduce this. The negative and the plus is gonna become a minus and it's gonna basically become two t cubed scalar. This is gone, it's factored out. And then t squared negative six. So I'm going to have 2t to the fifth plus 36, oh no, not 36, 72t comma 0. 72t. So this times that is this. This times 0 is 0. Minus, that's going to be 2t to the fifth. And I'm not multiplying the negative because I brought the negative down. I'm just multiplying the 2t cubed times negative 6, which is negative 12t cubed. So then 2t to the fifth, take away 2t to the fifth will cancel. So I will have 72t. And then zero take away a negative 12 t cubed is going to be a positive 12 t cubed. So that's t prime, OK? Now, when you take the magnitude of t prime, you don't need to use the scalar um, multiplier. 
that's not the part of the vector, okay? So you leave that there and you just take the square root of this stuff. So 72 squared is 5184t squared plus 144t to the six. You can factor out a 144 and a t squared. So I'm not gonna do a whole nother line, I'm just gonna do it over here on the side. So I'm gonna get square root 144 t squared, 5184 divided by 144 is 36 plus t to the fourth. And then this will come out as 12 t and then 36 t to the fourth. So what do we get here total? We will get this, And then we'll have this 12t, and then we'll have that um, over the plus. So we have um, essentially two to the four plus 36, but to the positive one half. So if I combine these guys, I'm gonna have 12t, and then t to the four plus 36, and that would be um, negative one. So what does that look like? n is going to look like t, which is this, over the magnitude which is what? These guys are going to reduce negative three halves um, take away a negative one is actually going to give me t to the fourth plus 36 to the negative one half. And then 72t divided by 12t is going to be six. 12t cubed divided by 12t is going to be t squared. And so then if I want to figure out what n of two is, I'm just going to plug in two. So I get two to the fourth, which is 16 plus 36 is 52. So 52 to the negative one half, and then six, two squared is four. So I essentially end up with six over the square root of 52 and four over the square root of 52. And I hope that's right because these problems are so long. And unfortunately, you do have to have one at least on your test. So I'm sorry, but I have to. Um, oh gosh, you can't even see anything past what I was doing. I'm so sorry. So I did all my work right for the magnitude of T and I got to this. And then essentially what I did was, um, oh, no, I did this and this, and then I was only working with the square root. So this is kind of like side work. It's not part of my lines. This is all just a bunch of stuff I did off to the side. So I'll kind of like box that in because that's just not it. Okay. Um, so I was just simplifying this radical. So I noticed that I could factor out a 144t squared. So then that left me with 36 and t to the fourth. Then I took the square root of the 144 t squared and got this, and the square root of that is just that, okay? I just almost forgot the plus sign in the middle. Then I put it together, right? So you have this junk right here, which is still there, and then this radical became this, 12 t times that with the house becomes a positive one half. Then I combine these two by adding their exponents, so I got a negative one exponent. So then n of t is going to be t prime. And for t prime, we got all of this. So I wrote all of that in the numerator. And then for um, the magnitude of t prime, I ended up with this down here. So I wrote that at the bottom of the fraction. And then I simplified each of these guys over the 12t, gave me these two entries. And then this guy divided by this, I literally take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent and gave me negative one half. So then I'm plugging in two. So when I plugged in two in here, I got 52. And then when I plugged in two here, I got four, okay? And this is the square root of two just uh, downstairs. So I wrote it as six square root of 52 over four square root of 52. So 
bear with me. I hope this is correct because that's a lot of work. Um, so we, we shall see if, it, if this is it. Um, those M's always make me really nervous because they're so long. It takes so much work. Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> I tried real hard not to make any mistakes because these are a nightmare to try to correct. You have so, look at how long the problem is, right? It's all the way up there. And this was a lot. Um, unfortunately, I have to put at least one on the test. I'm so sorry, but I have to. Um, so just keep that in mind, I guess. Um, definitely want to practice these for sure. Like just do them over and over and over and over again until you're getting them right every single time, okay? Um, so here, this is T. 5t to the negative 1, and then they give me the value t equals to 3. And so this one is a little tiny bit different in the fact that it does want some extra bits of information like at and an, um, which are the tangential and normal vector components of the acceleration. Um, so just keep in mind that, that there is different parts to that, okay? And so we will use some formulas when it comes to um, those, okay? So I guess we'll start. So the first thing that we wanna do is um, find those tangential and normal vectors again. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last time, except I'm gonna have a little extra piece at the end, okay? Um, now I do know, okay, so I'm gonna keep in hindsight, right? Let's write all the formulas for this. So we know that T is going to be um, R prime over the magnitude of R prime. We know that N is going to be T prime over the magnitude of T prime, okay? I also wanna write these because these help me to decide um, what else I'm gonna need, okay? So A of T is actually going to be the acceleration vector dot product with the tangent vector. So it's a dot product. And then A N is also the acceleration vector, but dot product with the normal vector, okay? Oh, you can't see that, okay? So I am gonna need the acceleration vector, which means not only am I gonna need R prime, which is V, right? We know that V equals R prime, but we also know that A equals R double prime. So I will need both R prime and R double prime, okay? So when I'm working on this, I'm actually gonna do R prime, which is one and then negative five T to the negative two. And then I'm also gonna do R double prime because I will need that later at the end since that is equivalent to the acceleration vector. So the derivative of these guys, which is zero, 10 t to the negative three, okay? Just gonna have that in mind for when we do that bottom parts, okay? So let's first find out t. So if I wanna find t of, what number did they give me? Because this is another way to do the last problem as well. If I'm trying to find t of three, then essentially all I need to do is find r prime of three over the magnitude of r prime of three, okay? So if I plug in three into r prime, I get one, um, this is not going to help me. Maybe it will, we'll see, we'll see. So I get one and then I get, um, dum, 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 dum. If I plug in three in here, I get negative five over nine. Yeah, no, that's not gonna help me. So that does help me to get what T3 is, but it's not gonna help me to figure out what N is. I do need to know the general um, response for the tangent vector, okay? So R prime is this guy which means the magnitude is one plus 25 T to the negative four, which is T to the negative four times T to the fourth plus 25, 
which is t to the negative 2 square root of t to the 4th plus 25, which is t squared and negative 5 over the square root of t to the 4th plus 25. So this is the general t. Okay. And that's going to come important. And then if I plug in um, three in here, you would have three squared, which is nine. And then if you plug in three into there, let's see, three raised to the fourth plus 25. And then the square root of that, oops, there, 106. You just get that. Oh, see, so this is not gonna be right then. Oh, I know why, because I never did the magnitude. I never did this. The square root of one plus 25 over 81. That's why I never did it. So if I wanted to simplify that, I could, but since I already have this simplified, if I do T of three, I'm going to get nine negative five over the square root of 106. And essentially, if I would have simplified this, I would have gotten the same thing. But I am going to need this because I'm going to have to do t prime. Okay. So you definitely have to do the general derivative so that you can get in later. Okay. So what is that going to look like in the computer? It's going to look like this and this. Okay. And we'll type that in, in the in in a little bit. Okay. Actually, let's just make sure we're good for now and just type it in now so I don't keep going. So vectors and then nine fraction operation square root of 106, comma, oh no, comma, negative five over. So let's check that just to be sure that it's good before we keep um, going. Yes, it is good. Okay, so now we can find n. And so n is found by doing t prime over the magnitude of t prime. So I'm gonna have to take the derivative of this. And taking the derivative of that is not easy because it requires that product rule, right? But before I begin that, I'm actually gonna rewrite t as um, t to the fourth plus 25 to the negative one half, because it's downstairs and it's a radical. So when I do the derivative, it's going to be the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the derivative of the first function and then times the second function as is. Okay, so that's the product rule. Now we're going to factor and simplify. So they do have a t to the fourth plus 25 in common. I'm going to take out the lower exponent, which is going to give me t to the fourth plus 25 to the one power, because negative three halves plus one is negative one half. Oh, in here, the plus and the minus is going to become a minus. And then this is factored out. So I just have one half of that, which is 2t cubed. And so I had 2t times each of these and then zero times each of those. So 2t to the fifth plus 50t comma zero minus and then multiply 2t cubed. So 2t to the fifth, and then, and I brought this minus down, so I'm only multiplying the 2t to the fifth. So this is negative 2t cubed, or 2t cubed. So this guy minus this guy is gonna just be the 50t in the first component, and then zero take away, take away is actually positive 10t cubed. So that's my prime, okay? 
Now, in order for me to find n, I also have to have the magnitude of this thing, which is not, this is not gonna be part of it. It's just a factor. So it's gonna be there. I just don't need to stick it under the radical because then it comes out exactly the same um, when I square it and then square root it because it's just a factor. But I do need to find this guy. So I'm gonna have 50 squared. What in the world is 50 squared? It's like 2,500. 50 squared, yes, 2,500. And then 100 t to the six. So I'm pretty sure I could take out 100. Um, I can take out 100 t squared, which gives me 25 plus t to the fourth. So the square root of 100 t squared is just 10 t. And then the square root of that, I can just switch the terms over because they're both positive. And so you have this. times t to the fourth plus 25 to the one half positive. And then since they have the same base, you can add their exponents. You get t to the four plus 25 to the negative one and then 10 t. So that's just 10 t to the negative one. So n is going to be t prime divided by the magnitude of t, which is 10t to the fourth plus 25 negative one. So you're gonna subtract the exponents, which will give you t to the fourth plus 25 to the negative one half. And then each of these divided by 10t is five comma t squared. And so then if I wanna find n of three, just remember I'm plugging in here. Yeah. It's going to be three cubed plus 20 or three to the fourth plus 25. So the square root of one or 106 to the negative one half and then five. And if I plug in three here, I get nine. So here we get five over the square root of 106 and nine over the square root of 106. another one I didn't show you there. So n was just t prime, all of that over the magnitude of t prime, which was this. So then I took that exponent, take away negative one, which actually means I'm adding one. I get negative one half. And then each of these guys divided by 10t is where we got five and t squared. And then if I plug in three into here, this becomes 81 plus 25, which is 106. Still got the same exponent. And when I plug in three here, I get nine. So this is a negative, which means it's downstairs and the one half means it's a radical. So five square root of 106 and then nine over square root of 106. So let's go plug that in. So we have five over square root of 106, comma, nine over square root of 106. And then let's see. We'll do the last part, which is A of T. No, A in, sorry, A T of T. Which I already mentioned is going to be A, the acceleration vector dot product with the tangent vector, okay? And it's the same thing if you wanna plug in a number, you just need to plug in that number into the acceleration vector and then plug in that number into T. So if I look at the acceleration vector, I 
I don't know what this is. Okay. I don't know what I pushed, <laughs> but whatever. So let's see. Um, acceleration vector, which is this guy, we got this. So I'm going to write 0 and 10 t to the negative 3. 0, 10 t to the negative 3. And then for t, we got this. And so I think when I simplified it, I ended up with this. So I'm going to write that up here. t squared negative 5. Okay, so I could also plug in the three. So if I plug in the three here, let's see. We're gonna get zero comma 10, three to the negative three, which is 10 over 27. And then dot product, and each of these is over this, okay? So I'm gonna type in fraction. Three squared over the square root Oh, this is not going to type it in nice. So I'm going to get 9 and negative 5, and then 3 raised to the fourth plus 25 is 106. Square root of 106, square root of 106. I should already know that. I already plugged that in, right? It's up here with the check mark. So I should have known that. Um, we just needed to plug in 3 into our acceleration vector. So I get 0 times this, which is 0, plus 10 times this, which is negative 50 over 27 square root of 106, which just gives me negative 50 over 27 square root of 106. These cannot be reduced, so I'm pretty sure that's everything they want from there. Let's just check it real quick before we keep going. And then we'll do a n. Okay, yay, so far, so good. So this one is the acceleration vector dot product with the natural, the normal vector. And so I can, I can just plug in three, okay? And we already know what a n, We already know what a of three is. It's this zero, 10 over 27. And we already know what n of three is. It's over there on the computer. It's five square root of 106 and then negative nine square root of 106. We did already do that. So then I get zero times this, which is zero plus 10 times this, which is negative 90 over 27 square root of one over six. But these do reduce, so I get negative 30. No, they reduce by 9, actually. So I get negative 10 over 9 over 3 squared 106. And so then let's type that in there. Negative 10 over 3 square root of 106. And hit submit. And let's see how we do. We still have 38 to 9. Five more. Oh, nope, it didn't like that one. Let's go see why. Okay, I see where we went wrong. Notice what I have here for N3. But over here, my response for N3, the 9 is positive. So this should not have been a negative which means this should not have been a negative, and then therefore my 10 is not a negative. So we'll delete that negative and resubmit and see if it will work this time. Yay, now we have our other check. Okay, great. So we'll move on to number 38. And so we only have five more problems left. So for question 38, the vector 
function is negative t, 3t, and then 6t. And then the interval is from 0 to 1. And what they're asking us here to do is just to sketch the curve. But before I do that, I can make the table to come up with the values. However, I want to make sure that when I draw it, that I am forming my axes the way they have positioned their axes, OK? And then eventually, we'll find the length. Um, they don't call it arc length because it's a straight line, and therefore, it doesn't actually have any kind of curvature. So they just call it length. But essentially, what we'll be doing is finding the um, arc length on that interval. So let's go ahead and first make our table. So we're going to need a couple of values for t, maybe not you know a bunch, but we'll start with 0. Um, it may be enough just to do 0, 0 0.5, and 1. So we'll go with that and see if we need any extra information. So when I plug in 0 here, I'm going to get 0, 0, and 0. When I plug in 0.5, I'm going to get and 3. And then when I plug in 1, I'm going to get negative 1, 3, and 6. So let's face our axes the way this one is. So we've got the z going up like that. But then we've got y going in this direction. And then we have, um, and it looks like this is in the positive y direction. And then this would be the negative y direction. And then we also have the x-axis going in this direction, which is positive over here and then negative over there. So 0, 0, 0 is going to be here. Then negative 1 for x would be over, or negative 0.5 would be here. 1, 1 and a half, 2. So we're here. And then negative 1 for, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. That's 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So it would be 6. So we want um, 0 0.5, then 1.5. So here's the shadow, but it is going to be up. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. OK. So we're going to go up 3 units. So 3 units is about this measurement. So it'll be a point floating up above this um, quadrant in the xy plane. And then now over here for the y, we're going to have negative negative one and then three so its shadow will be further out on the xy plane but then it's going to be up six units so it's going to be way up here so the line is going toward this plane but it's going up higher and higher on the z-axis okay so let's see which of these graphs have that information um negative one and this one looks like it has the right information. This one does not look like it's high enough. It looks like it went far out way past six. So it can't be this one. This one also goes far out past six. And then this one doesn't even go anywhere near five. So it must be this top right graph. But we do have to go ahead and find the arc length. So let's use that formula there. For s, we are going to get the inner integral of 0 to 1, because that's my um, interval. <laughs> integral and interval. Be very careful. And then I'm going to take my vector value function and integrate with respect to t. So let's go ahead and integrate first. We get negative t squared over 2, 3t squared over 2, and then 6t squared over 2, which is just 3t squared. And we still have to, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing the wrong formula. We have to actually do the integral of the magnitude of our prime. So the magnitude of our prime. 
So we'll piece this together then. The R prime is going to be negative one, three, and six. And then the magnitude of that is going to be the square root of one plus nine plus 36, which is 46. And then when I integrate the square root of 46, I get the square root of 46 T evaluated from zero to one, which means 40, square root of 46 times one minus zero, which is just the square root of 46. So we do have its um, arc length here. And I'm gonna type in that exact value. I do wanna make sure that it doesn't simplify um, and it does not. So we'll just type in square root of 46. So let's check both of our answers and then we can move on to 39, which I'll do on a different page. Oh, it does say it's this graph versus that graph. So it looks like it went way past six. Oh, I see. It, if you look at the Z, no, that looks like it's, if I stay parallel to the Y axis down here, this does look like it went to six. Oh, and if I stay parallel, this one does look like it went to six as well. That one's really close. I don't know how you would be able to tell the difference if you were given multiple choices like this. I could tell you right now that that's not gonna happen on the test, but um, I won't ask you to graph that on the test. However, here, for some reason I could not tell. So what other graph would it be if it was not that one? It may be this graph here, and I'm not saying that because the X is right there, because the check and the X will always appear right here in this position. But as I'm looking at my, all of them start at zero, zero, but then which would have the point negative 0 0.5, 1.53. So negative 0 0.5, um, 1.5 would be about here, and then it would have to go up the three units. So there should be a point like somewhere around here. And it looks like the only graph that has that point is this one. Now, if I go further and I do um, negative one and then positive three units and then six units up, it does look like it would be this one. So let's go ahead and verify that. I think I was too quick to choose the graph the last time. It's just so much easier to draw it yourself than to try to eyeball it on these problems. Yep, see now we got the recheck. So we're good there. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Last four problems. And most of these do not take quite as long as those ones with the T and the N, the tangent vectors and the um, normal vectors. So if I write this in vector form, we're gonna get one plus the square root of two over two S comma, one minus the square root of two over two s. And they're asking me for k, but when you have r of s, the formula that you should use for, use for k is t prime of s, the magnitude of t prime of s, okay? So we're gonna have to find t first, and then we can find t prime. So t is gonna be r prime of s over the magnitude of r prime of s. So r prime is essentially just going to be the square root of two over two, and then negative square root of two over two. The magnitude of that is going to be two over four plus two over four, which is just one. So we get square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. Divided by one doesn't change it, okay? Um, so now that we have this, and notice there just happens to not be any variable s's in it, it's fine. Um, but when I take t prime of s, I'm gonna take the derivative of two constants, which is just zero and zero. So I got zero and zero. And let's use our, um, oh, but I still have to find the magnitude of t of this. So square root of zero plus zero is just zero. So I just need the number zero. It's just coincidence that it's zero. 
it won't always <laughs> come out to just zero. But here it is. Okay, great check mark. Now for the next one, this one you have R of T, which is different when you have R of S. So it's a totally different formula for curvature. So we have T, uh, one over 36 T squared, and, oh, that's T cubed. That makes a difference. And then it tells me that T equals three. So for this formula, well, actually we don't have S, so we're gonna have to use a different formula. And you can use whichever of the formulas apply to R of T. I just happen to have one that I um, want to use. And so the one I wanna use is the acceleration vector um, dot product with the normal vector all over the magnitude of the normal vector, or I'm sorry, of velocity, which is vector V. Okay, um, squared. So this is the formula that I'm going to use. Again, you don't have to use the same one as me, but I'm going to. So V is the first one, that's just R prime. So in this case, we get one and three over 36 is one over 12 T squared. And then the acceleration vector is going to be R double prime, which is gonna be zero and then two over 12, which is one over six T. So then let's go find that tangent vector in order to find the normal vector. So tangent vector is gonna be R prime over the magnitude of R prime. And so then if I factor out the 144, I'm gonna get 144 plus T to the fourth, which this will come out as a 112th. And when you divide by 112th, it actually turns into a 12 on top. And so then if I distribute that 12, I end up with um, 12 and T squared. And then just this scalar multiple in the front, I'm gonna write it as an exponent. So we get 144 plus T to the fourth and then raised to the negative one half power. Okay, now from there, we're going to find the magnitude of that. So the magnitude of T is going to be, this stays there, because when I square root the square of it, it just comes out like the way it is. And then the square root of 144 plus T to the fourth, which means you have 144 T to the fourth to the positive one half power and then the negative one half power, you add the powers together, you actually get 144 plus t to the fourth raised to the zero. Anything raised to the zero is just one. So that means that in, um, I do need in, yep, yep, yep. In is going to be essentially the same thing as t. No, it's not. I need to find t prime. Yep, I did the magnitude too soon. I'm supposed to take the magnitude of T prime, not the magnitude of T. So we gotta find the derivative of T. There we go. And why? Because N is T prime over the magnitude of T prime. So I'm gonna use the product rule though, now that I have it all set up like that. So the first function plus or times the derivative of the second function plus the derivative of the second function. Chain rule times the second function. Okay, so then I'm gonna distribute this. I'm just gonna get, actually I'm gonna factor out 144 plus t to the fourth to the negative three half powers. Okay. 
and then this and this will make 2t cubed, 12t squared. So I get, uh, I get this times zero, which is zero minus, so that's going to be negative 24 t cubed. This zero minus this times this, which is this. And then these guys times both of these minus this times this. So I'm going to have minus 2t to the fifth. That's also what I'm going to get. I'm going to get positive 2t to the fifth. So those are going to cancel. So really, I just have the 288t. And then therefore, I don't need this bracket anymore. And when I find the magnitude of that t prime, again, this is just going to be there in the front. Oh gosh, 24 squared is a big number. Let's see, 576t to the 6 plus 288 squared which is this huge number, uh, t to the, let's see, t squared. So I can factor out a t squared, and I'm pretty sure I can factor out another number. I want 144 and t to the fourth. Let's see if this can be divided by 576. It can, and it's 144. So I'm going to take out this number, and I will get t to the fourth plus 144. And then what's the square root? Clear square root of 576, I think, is a 24. Yep. So we get 24t and then 144 plus t to the fourth the negative three halves times 144 plus t to the fourth with a positive one half which is 24 t and 144 plus t to the fourth to the negative one power okay so this guy this guy squared plus that guy squared factored out 576 t squared so square root of this is this, square root of this is this, and then these two I'm putting together. Um, so then if I wanna find n, I need to do t prime over t. So I'm essentially gonna take this and divide it by that. I'm telling you, any of these problems with the t's and the n's take forever. And I'm going to divide it by so this minus a negative one is actually adding one. So we get 144 plus 2 to the 4 to the negative 1 half. Each of these divided by 24 is negative t squared 288 divided by 24 is 12 and the t will cancel. Um, and they want to know, so k is this formula right here. So I'm going to put everybody in. So there's a, I have n on the other page, and then I need the magnitude of this. So let's see what we get here for k. It's going to be a, which is 0, 1, 6, t dot product with, and I'm going to write this the long way, comma 12 over this, all over the magnitude of v, which is the magnitude of that. So square root of 1 plus 1 over 144 t to the fourth. Let's 
So how do we simplify this times this is just gonna be a big zero. Plus this times this is gonna be two T in the numerator. And then 144 plus T to the fourth. Then negative one half. And downstairs we have the square root of 144 times one over 144. 144 plus t to the fourth. So when I distribute that, I get these two terms. Then we're going to take the square root of that, which is 1 over 12, and then the square root of 144 plus t to the fourth. So what happens? We This 12 will go upstairs, so we got 24t. Um, 144 plus t to the fourth to the negative one half, and then 144 plus t to the negative four, or t to the fourth to the one half. So this one, if I want to make it positive, will go downstairs. And if I have a half and a half, that means I have a full or one whole, which means it'll just be 144 plus t to the fourth without an exponent. Um, but they do want me to find the value at the t that's given. So I'm essentially finding k of three. So 24 times three over 144 plus three to the four. What is 81 plus 144? That's 225 over or under 72. And I don't know if that can be reduced. It can, I get eight over 25. So let's check that. Nope, it says that is wrong. So let me go back and see where I made my error. Okay, I found the error. When I put everybody into my curvature formula, notice that for the curvature formula, we wrote here that um, the curvature was the acceleration dot product, the normal vector over the velocity, magnitude of the velocity vector squared. And when I came over here, I did the magnitude of the velocity vector, but I certainly forgot to square it. So when I squared it, that meant that the house would just go away. And essentially that means this is 144. And there is no house around this. So it's just basically to the one power. And so I can move this down there with it, but when I do one plus a half is going to give me three halves. And then when this 144 goes up there, it's essentially going to be 100 or 288. So when I plug in three, it's going to be, 288 times three over the square root of 144 plus 81, which is 225, but cubed, right? That's what the three halves powers mean. So 288 times three is 864. The square root of 225 is 15. And if I cube the 15, I get three, three, seven, five. I'm not sure if that reduces, but we'll see. And it does reduce to 32 over 125. Um, or if I enter in decimal 0 0.256. So let's see if we enter that, what it will say. Finally, we got the green check. Okay, so this problem is super long, but we definitely have to be very, very careful, okay? So when I plugged it into the curvature formula, I had to have the magnitude squared, which meant 
that even though I factored out the 144 from these two terms, um, I don't have that square root anymore. So I just have the 144 and then this just as it is, which is like an invisible one exponent. So I can take the 144 up to the top, getting 288t. And then this negative one half can go down to the bottom, giving me three halves downstairs. When I plug in three into that curvature though, we get these values, which simplify down to this decimal. Okay, so we can finally move on to our second to last problem, 41. So y equals 5x plus 7x to the negative 1 and x equals 1. And these are a nice um, breath of fresh air compared to the ones that have the tangential vectors and the normal vectors. So for curvature, for when they give you y, is just going to be the absolute value of y prime over um, 1 plus y prime squared and then raised to the 3 halves. So let's go figure out our y prime and our y double prime. So y prime is going to be 5 minus 7x to the negative 2, and y double prime is going to be 5 minus or plus 14x to the negative 3. If I'm trying to find y prime of 1, then that's going to be 5 minus 7 times 1 to the negative 2, 5 minus 7, which is just negative 2. y double prime of 1 is going to be 5 plus 14, 1 to the negative 3, which is just 5 plus 14, which is 19. So we get k equals absolute value of 19 over 1 plus negative 2 squared raised to the 3 halves. So the absolute value of 19 is 19. 1 plus 4 is 5 to the 3 halves. So you could say 19 over the square root of 5 cubed, which is 19 over the square root or 5 square root of 5. So let's try that as our response there. Um, fraction 19 over 5, radical 5. And then for the reciprocal, we're going to do 5 radical 5 over 19. And it's not like that. What is going on here? 5x. Oh, I see what I did. The derivative of 5 is not 5. The derivative of 5 is 0. Which means this should just be 14. Hopefully that's the only error that was made there. I don't know what's going on with me today, but it seems like I'm making errors everywhere. I need coffee. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. It's the same thing, it's just a different function. And it's asking us to figure out where the curvature is zero. So we still wanna use the same formula for curvature, but essentially what we do is we can't plug in a number we have to leave the expressions in the formula and then set the whole formula equal to zero and solve for x, okay? So let's go ahead and start that process. So first derivative is gonna be zero, negative three x squared. Second derivative is going to be negative six x. So then if I'm setting curvature equal to zero, I am essentially setting the absolute value of this guy over one plus this guy squared raised to the three halves. Um, and it really doesn't matter what the bottom part simplifies to because I am gonna have to multiply both parts by that, both sides of the equation. And then it's just gonna cancel out. And zero times anything, no matter what the X value is, is just gonna be zero. And so I'm essentially solving that equation. And the only way the absolute value of this expression can equal zero is if the expression inside equals zero, which means if x equals zero. 
And so then I know that the x value is zero. And if I want to know the y value, I just need to plug it into the function. And so the y value is eight. Okay, we are finally finished with this review. So I hope you um, use these examples. I would definitely watch the whole video before trying to do the problems, especially since there's a few of them where I made mistakes, right? So you definitely wanna watch the whole thing, make sure you have the right formula, make sure you're using the right quantities um, so that you can get the correct answers the first go around and not have to go back and change some stuff the second time. Um, but hopefully all of this helps and just keep in mind the test does need to be completed within an hour and a half to two hours. So I, when I, when I put it together, I will take it myself and I must be able to take it within less than 30 minutes. So I know this was a really, really long review. I made it that way intentionally so that you could recall all of your concepts throughout all of these last two chapters. It's a lot of chapters. Um, for one test, um, but I wanted to be able to point out everything from all of them. And then from these questions, you will see the test questions, okay? So if you're able to execute all 42 of these problems and know how to work them out, then you should be safe on the test because they're gonna be a few of these 42 problems, nowhere near 42. Again, 10 to 20 max on a test, okay? Um, but good luck, everybody. <laughs>